Welcome here to more Talk FCB and welcome to full reaction to the Champions League final. We wondered on this day whether Pep Guardiola would secure Man City's first ever title. Would Sergio Aguero enjoy the perfect send-off as he plays his final City game? But no, in the end, in Portugal, Chelsea have emerged as the winners and now champions of Europe after the one man who seemed to have gone under the radar not just in this game but right throughout the season, Chelsea's record signing and the emerging youngster, Kai Havertz. He gets the winning goal. Chelsea are victorious. What an achievement there for Thomas Tuchel. But it's heartbreak for Pep, for Aguero and for the entirety there of that Man City team. We're going to be talking about it all. So, let's get to it. Because I have to say, straight away, before the game had even started, you did feel as though Pep Guardiola took a massive risk there in terms of his team selection. And the one thing you've got to say about Pep is, he will never shy away from the big occasion. He will always go with his instincts, he'll always be brave. And in this game, he had to decide not to play any defensive midfielder. There was no Rodri, there was no Fernandinho. He went as well without a recognised striker, which wasn't as much of a surprise. But clearly there, I felt in the opening exchanges and right throughout the game, Man City, they never really found themselves. In a game like this, the way they played right throughout the season, we didn't see that kind of Man City team. They didn't create anything, they didn't really sustain any pressure. Chelsea shut them down very, very well. And Golo Kante, he was absolutely monstrous in that midfield. And let's go over some of the highlights. Because it was actually there, Man City, who created the first chance of the game, and the chances for City came few and far between. So Edison there, playing a stunning pass into the path of Raheem Sterling, who was a real surprise starter on the day. But sadly there, Sterling couldn't quite get that first touch right. He was closed down by Reese James, and in the end, pushed away from goal, which saw the chance evade him. But down the other end, then the chances started to come, and certainly Chelsea started to really grow into the game. And it was Timo Werner. He had a period there in that first off where he could have scored not once, not twice, but he could have had a hat-trick in the game. The first one there, it was a cutback, nice little ball from Kai Havertz, back to Timo Werner, he's in front of goal, but he completely misses his kick and the chance is gone. There was another chance moments later, again Chelsea really looking to attack that left-hand side, the ball again was cut back to Werner, this time it's an even more central position, but as you can see there, he just gets the ball stuck under his feet, he couldn't quite get it out there, he couldn't get the power on the shot, with Edison in the end able to collect the ball and just moments later again he was running in behind and that is the one thing that he did really give Chelsea yes he was missing chance in front of the goal but he was always an outlet that was something I feel that City themselves like they didn't really have that kind of runner in behind there to keep stretching City time and time again and Werner hitting the side netting on that occasion but I think there was certainly a period there in that first half sort of 10 minutes or so where Man City didn't start moving the ball with a bit more of a purpose and the biggest chance the biggest sort of half chance to come out of that period of the game it fell there to their golden boy, Phil Foden. It was some really, really nice play there for a Man City. Good build-up. De Bruyne gets it in a nice area. He plays a brilliant pass into Foden. He's into the box. And in that moment, you thought, you know what? That's going to be a goal. Foden there bearing down on Mendy's goal. It is going to be a goal. But out of nowhere, Rudiger with an absolutely unbelievable last-ditch challenge there sliding in in the dying seconds to make that recovery. Brilliant, brilliant tackle. And that was a defining moment, certainly, in this game. Because then, just minutes before the half time whistle. It was a fantastic through ball from the other golden boy. This time on the side of Chelsea. Mason Mount with a really good ball. Havertz there running directly at the heart of Man City. Straight and central there running behind. Edison feels as though he can come out and get the ball. We've seen him do it many, many times in the past but he doesn't this time. And when you come out there, when you certainly expose yourself and your goal, you've got to get that ball. He knew as well he couldn't lunge and risk taking out Havertz. In the end Havertz there gets on the end of it. He keeps his cool. And like I say, for somebody there who's endured a difficult season, he's had problems on the pitch, he's had problems off it, finding his place in the team. But here, on the biggest stage of all, he had to keep his head. And he has scored what turned out to be 
the winning goal. And I think certainly there at half time, what you could see right throughout that first half, and indeed the game, was just the way that Chelsea really did nullify City in terms of everything they were trying to create. Chelsea just shut them down time and time again there. The door was slammed in their face. They kept the spaces really, really tight. They were restricting Man City to play in really tight spaces. And I just didn't feel as though today City had that crisp passing game. They weren't passing with the same confidence, with the same purpose. And for that reason, they couldn't find a way through Chelsea. Chelsea, they're winning the ball back very, very quickly. And when they did win it back, they were doing things with it. City could not sustain that pressure. And just moments there, into that second half, things for them. They got even worse too. Because Kevin De Bruyne, who up until that point, to be fair, was not having a good game, wasn't really the kind of De Bruyne that we've seen right throughout the season. What we know, he is capable of. But he had a really heavy blow there. Rudiger blocked him off. He got booked for what he did. It was a really, really big collision. De Bruyne stayed down there for several minutes, which meant at the end of the game, there was a lot of added on time. And sadly for De Bruyne, he had to go off there. He had a big, big bruise. You could already see it appearing under his eye. And that was Man City's creativity pretty much gone. From that moment on, they never looked as though they were going to turn this game around. That is very, very strange to say of a Pep Guardiola team, of a Man City side. They did try and bring on some subs, but it almost felt as though the damage had been done. They never really recovered there from the way that they started the game. There was a penalty appeal, though, in that second half. There was a moment there where Raheem Sterling blasted a volley through a series of bodies there. It did appear to hit Reese James's arm. They were going absolutely wild there. Several Man City players surrounding the referee, Mattia Lahoz. He seemed to indicate there that the ref, but it had actually hit Reese James's chest first, and then it went onto his shoulder area, so he didn't believe that it was a penalty. VAR did look into it, and they came to the same conclusion. And I've got to say, if anybody was going to score, probably it was going to be Chelsea get another one. Pulisic there, coming off the bench. He had a really, really good chance there. About 15 or so minutes from the end of the game, he was in on goal. Edison there trying to spread himself, but Pulisic with a brilliant chance to score, but he just drags it wide of the target. And you can see there, Thomas Tuchel, absolutely distraught that Chelsea did not double their lead. But as I say, you never really had that feeling as though Man City were composed then to get themselves back in the game. And as the game went on, they were throwing more and more bodies forward. Sergio Aguero came on for his last ever Man City appearance. We were wondering if we were going to have one of those late Aguero moments, but it didn't come. There was balls across the box. Man City there were trying to get on the end of things. But again, too little, too late. They should have committed more bodies. They should have had more of a presence in the area, I feel, much, much earlier in the game. Chelsea were throwing everything they had in front of shots. They were blocking things. They were getting in the way, intercepting. It was absolutely a fantastic team performance from them. And the final moment, the dying seconds of the game, it was Riyad Mahrez. That was the final chance for Man City there. Ball bouncing on the edge of the area. He hits it there and everybody just stood and watched. Even the keeper there, Mendy, he's watching the ball, hoping and praying that it wasn't going to go in the top corner. I think really that sums up City's game. You felt as though the potential was there. You felt as though this was their massive chance to win the Champions League. It hurts for me to see Pep not go and do it there with all the affection that we have for him. Of course, Sergio Aguero, he was in tears at the final whistle. He's going to come and join Barca now and we're going to try and look after him. But it's a really sad day and a difficult day if you're a Man City fan. But if you're Chelsea, you have come here. You've upset the odds. It's a massive win. Their second Champions League title in their history. And what a way tonight for Thomas Tuchel, who was in the final last season, remember, with PSG. He's taken on this Chelsea team and they have achieved... The impossible. And of course, guys, in the aftermath now of this final, Chelsea are going to be jubilant. There is going to be a lot of praise going the way, and rightly so, like I say, of Thomas Tuchel and all of his players out there today who really did play their part, especially a big, big goal in his career for the young Kai Havertz. But of course, the City, I undoubtedly know there's going to be a lot of criticism going the way of Pep Guardiola in terms there of the risk that he took in that team selection. We have seen him in seasons gone by in the Champions League make strange choices, which in the end of backfired, but I do think it would be harsh. Yes, you can say, look, Pep, today he'll probably hold his hands. He'll say, I didn't get it right. But at the same time, the players that Man City had out on the field, they still should have done more. This was a big game for City. I think several of those players out there underperformed. They can do much, much better than what we saw of them today. And I think in the end, the pressure, the occasion, the expectation of winning that first Champions League title, I think it's got to them. The entire team in the end couldn't get over the line. Chelsea could, and they deserve their win. You've got to be honest. 
in the end. So that right there, guys, is the Champions League final 2021. Chelsea leave as the champions, and as a result now, they will not only take home the Champions League trophy from Portugal, but they will also be taking part, of course, in the European Super Cup. That game will see them play La Liga's own Villarreal. That should be a good one, as the club season comes to a close. Thanks for watching here, guys. And make sure you're staying updated right throughout the summer on this channel. We've got Copper America and we have the Euros. It should be exciting and I cannot wait for it all to get started. I will see you then, guys. Leave your thoughts on the big final down below. But until next time, as always, Vizca El Barca.